very clear is it's just another of what we would call metabolic diseases. And by the way, the big breakthrough, I recently wrote my book, Say No to Arthritis, because it's now clear it's not a wear and tear disease. Um, it's actually a metabolic disease. So mm -hmm. it has a lot of the same drivers that we see for diabetes and weight gain and heart disease, you know, and the main cancers like breast and prostate and so on. No different. And, uh, you know, many people don't necessarily understand what it is. When you start to lose your memory significantly and the doctor sends you to a memory clinic, and they do what's called a cognitive function test. If you don't score well, they diagnose you with what they call mild cognitive impairment, or you could call it pre-dementia. And if you do even worse, you get diagnosed with dementia. So a loss of cognitive function. And, you know, short-term memory goes, your ability to sort of do executive functions to sort of, you know, work things out and put them together and so on starts to deteriorate. Now, two-thirds of that dementia is a disease and it is a disease not a function of the aging process you never need to get this of course it's more common in older people but it's not a function of the aging process it's a shrinkage of a central part of the brain it's called the medial temporal lobe or the hippocampus and you can only diagnose alzheimer's on a brain scan so then we end up with two-thirds of dementia is alzheimer's and maybe a quarter is what they call um, vascular dementia cerebrovascular dementia, so poor supply, blocked arteries, poor supply of nutrients to the brain. And um, both have exactly the same risk factors and exactly the same, um, you know, means to prevent. And if I, I'll give you an example, just to sort of cut to the very recent news chase. So you understand we're not just talking fluffy prevention here. Um, last week or the week before, the newspapers were full of this new drug, lecanemab, um, it's, a, a, it's actually a, a sort of antibody injection. So antibodies that are designed to go towards these blockages called amyloid plaque. And, uh, you know, front page head news, you know, finally we have something that does something. And I was reading in The Guardian, they said, well, of course, you know, we can't expect any drugs or any treatment to actually stop the disease process, which is to do with brain shrinkage. And sure enough, this class of drugs don't stop brain shrinkage. Well, it's not quite true. One of them showed a 2% reduction in brain shrinkage. Now, I work with a wonderful team at Oxford University, headed by Professor David Smith, who was the professor of pharmacology and the vice dean of the medical school. And he's achieved 73% less brain shrinkage. Oh, okay? fascinating. Yeah. Right? I mean, 73% less brain shrinkage. Oof. Mm -hmm. giving B vitamins um, to people who also have sufficient omega-3, and we can kind of unpack that. Mm -hmm. Also, the actual effect, uh, you measure what's called the clinical dementia rating. It's an 18-point scale, and this new drug was the first drug to cross the line and get statistical significance with a 0.45 point drop. So imagine an 18-point questionnaire, and you're scoring less than half a point difference. Now, that would have no clinical effect at all. In other words, the person wouldn't notice, the carer wouldn't notice, it wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But the study was large enough to claim statistical significance. Now, the omega-3 and B vitamins are already, you know, three times more effective on exactly the same measure. And to put it into context in the study that, you know, we can talk a little bit about, uh, the participants, 30% had a zero clinical dementia rating at the end of the study. So in other words, almost a third of people doing the B vitamins and omega-3 would no longer be diagnosed with dementia.